Hey, I'm here at Westview. We're about to start a community consultation looking at bringing in police presence into the school. Uh, it'll be made up of a panel of the superintendent, uh, our board trustee, as well as the Toronto Police, uh, available to answer questions from the community. And the community is made up of parents, teachers, frontline staff, and, as, and of course students. Um, all coming up next. So I'm at Westview uh, Collegiate Institute with Stephanie Payne, the board trustee for York West. How are you today? Good. We just finished here today a consultation regarding police on campus or on school property. How do you feel about uh, the input today? I think it was quite productive. I certainly heard the views of the community, what they had to say, and I'm certainly going to take all those views into consideration. So where do you think uh, the disconnect between the trust between community and policing, where do you think that comes from? Well, I think it, it's a history. Let's go back to the early 70s when there was a lot of abuse with the police and the community. And I think here, seeing what had happened in the 70s, youth or, or today's youth still have that distrust of the police. We need to have our youth more engaged. We need to have positive relationships with the police. How we do that, is it police in schools? I'm not sure that could happen because we should do it in the elementary schools. I remember when my kids were going to school, we had Elmer, the friendly yes, elephant. So Elmer. we need to we're do that. We, exactly. So we need to go back to that and train our children from very young in grade one, kindergarten, that the police are, could be our friends. Now the climate of this space today was very push and pull, very opposite ends. Now let's go for the dream. In the dream, what would this look like, this partnership? Well, I don't know if I can call it a dream because I would want to know that you as a parent send your child to school to learn. You would, as a parent, would want to check your son's bag in the morning to ensure he doesn't have a weapon. That's what, that would be my dream, to ensure that every student, every staff in our schools are safe, that parents can know they've gone off to work, they send the children to school and they're safe. And that would be my dream. Having a police officer in the schools would not be a dream for me. It, it would be a nightmare, simply that I don't think it's the way we should be going in this country. We need to harbor more positive relationships. So that's it. Now, with what has happened today in the space, again, what do you think is going to be a reasonable compromise? Well, I think a reasonable compromise on my part would be to look at having the resource um, persons in schools such as um, community slash social worker, community slash counselor in Westview, in Jeffries and in Emory to support our student body and to enhance the hall monitors and the social workers that are there. Because I think when a student brings a weapon to school, something is definitely wrong. And I think in order to avoid that and be able to meet the students and engage them, would be better than having an officer in the school because I think the dropout rate would increase because a lot of our students, you know that, wouldn't come to school. Some of our students we know have had run-ins with the law and is experiencing difficulty so therefore to have a police officer in the school would heighten that awareness. So what we need to do is look at increasing our protective factors with our young people and decreasing the risk factors by engaging them in some decision making. Um, I hear and I see in the proposal that cost will be a minimal. Um, all they are requesting is for office space and a pin drop of uh, internet feed. Um, so realistically, what will be the cost or where is the money coming from? The cost to the board is actually quite minimal because it's just a matter of plugging in a computer to an to a outlet that's there and providing them with a space and maybe a telephone. So that is really minimal. We wouldn't, the board wouldn't be paying the officer's cost, which is, you know, not expected. The cost will be covered by the Toronto Police Services and the City of Toronto. Now, um, the Faulkner report came. Um, a lot of recommendations were made. Um, it doesn't seem like those recommendations are being pushed through. Um, bringing police on campus was one of the lower recommendations, so why is that? The recommendation was not to have police in our schools. Julian did not recommend that. I think the 126 recommendations are slowly being pulled together. And when I say slowly, very, very slowly on behalf of the Toronto District School Board. What needs to happen is people like you, myself, and parents need to get together and push the Minister of Education for fundings for communities such as this that is in crisis to get more resources in our schools. 
to compliment the Faulkner's report. Any last words to our viewers? Well, I would certainly like to say that I would be taking serious consideration into the views tonight. I'm hoping everyone hand in the green sheets so I could really take a look at that. And, I, you know, uh, I represent my students and my parents who elected me, and this is the purpose of tonight's meeting. My name's Ian Lamond. My last name is spelled L-A-M-O-N-D. I'm the Staff Sergeant with the 31 Division Community Response Unit. Now, the climate of today's uh, meeting or consultation, was this expected? Uh... Yeah, usually uh, we have, uh, there, there's a lot of concerns. Um, one, one thing I'd like to make straight is, is that the school resource officer program is only in schools that want them, and they're not there to patrol the halls, they're not there to arrest kids, okay? I have three officers working for me in three different high schools. They haven't arrested anybody this year. They've gone to camps, they've gone taking kids on school trips, they've started basketball teams, they go to parent-teacher night, they go to school dances. The officers are not in the school as an armed force. They're there to build a relationship with the kids. And I'd like to make that clear. And I don't think a lot of people understand them. And perhaps if they look, took another look at the program, they'd, they'd understand it better. Yeah. Um, so judging from the atmosphere in the room, uh, there is a very push and pull uh, dynamics that are happening. Um, is there any, what's your input on the mistrust that community has with the police or even the other way around if that exists? Well, I know that there's some people in the community who are mistrustful of the police or, or negative towards the police or whatever. Um, all I can say is you got to meet us halfway and we, somebody's got to raise the olive branch and we're trying and this is another way that we're doing and trying to build relationship with the community and um, hopefully people will see it that way and that we're not here to put armed officers into school to criminalize kids or arrest kids that's not what it's all about so uh, give us a chance and uh, we can see where we can go from there a lot of the young people were really saying um, you know we welcome the police but the uniform and and uh, guns or weapons, that kind of creates something different or a vibe. What do you have to say about that? Again, um, the school resource officers or any of our officers, we're actively involved in programs here in Westview and there is no school resource officer here. We started a wrestling program here. We do generation change, empowered student partnerships. Sometimes the officers are in uniform, sometimes they're not. And you know when you, you go, these kids are going to have to leave the school one day, you're going to have to go to the big world out there. You're going to have to interact with a lot of different people. Some you might not like, you're going to have to work with them. You may have to go to different parts of the country, different countries in, entirely. You're going to have to deal with people one-on-one uh, -on -one and look beyond the outside, what you see on the outside. So look beyond the uniform, look beyond the gun and see the person. And uh, we have to wear a uniform, it's a law. We wear a gun, it's a tool of our trade. Unfortunately, we have to have it, but it isn't our only thing that defines us as people. And I'd like people to look beyond that and give us a chance for that. And if there is a school resource officer, great. If there isn't, it doesn't change anything. We're still going to have a relationship with Westview and uh, C.W. Jeffries and Emory as we do now. Uh, one of the points in the brochure say that uh, the police will be on uh, in the school between two to three days. And besides that, they will be visiting feeder schools. Do the feeder schools know? Do the parents know about that? Yeah, the kid, there are, we're still in, uh, involved with the feeder schools and the other. We're, we're at uh, McGuigan, Downsview, and Weston now. And the feeder schools from those schools, we also uh, deliver programs and, and interact with the kids and those things. Yeah. So, yeah, the, any of the parents or teachers or staff at this, all those schools that we have officers now are well aware that we're in the feeder schools. And in some cases, um, they are actually uh, doing programs with other schools too, other secondary schools. Right. So feeder schools are schools that are going into high school, so elementary, middle schools, they all feed into one high school. Yeah, middle school would be like uh, Aliyah Middle School for, um, for C.W. Jeffries and that kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Now in an ideal world, um, based on the conversation here and the perspective that community policing is bringing in as well as TDUSB, what would be a compromise uh, for everyone? A compromise for Westview? Or? For policing on school, but to address some of the issues that the students have with armed police officer, uh, a uniformed police officer. Some of the parents are like, you know, there's other recommendations or other strategies that can be made. TDSB is, you know, of course concerned about safety and, and their students. Uh, the role of police in trying to build these uh, relationships. What would be a compromise to, 
for all people involved? Well, like I said, we only go to the schools. We only have school resource officers where they're where they were asked to be placed. So, if say in this instance, Westview doesn't ask for one, we're still going to continue our programs and our relationship building. So. The compromise would be is I guess we'd carry on with our programs and we'd hopefully uh, we'd make some inroads in uh, dispelling some of the mistrust, and especially among the youth. After the, uh, the formal uh, question period, I spoke with several of the youths here and I, I addressed the same, I said the same thing that I said to you is that they have to look beyond the uniform, they have to look beyond the gun. It's simply uh, an outside thing that we have to wear and it's, it's not what defines us. So if they look beyond that, maybe we can work on something. So compromises, we're still going to carry on with the relationship with the Westview and Emory and C.W. Jeffries. My last question is about the Faulkner Report. There are a lot of recommendations made. Uh, and Stephanie just schooled me and said even uh, like school policing wasn't even one of the recommendations. I know you're coming from a different uh, point of view, but would, be, would it be effective to put in some of these recommendations or in conjunction with having police presence? What's your take on the Faulkner Report? Uh, not up on all the Falconer report and the us us having school resource officers it wasn't put in as a safety measure to say uh, patrol hallways and uh, you know run metal detectors and seize weapons that wasn't why the officers were placed in here and uh, as uh, staff superintendent Federico said the chief saw an opportunity and he offered that opportunity to the school boards and they, some schools took it up on us and the opportunity was that we'd have officers in here for relationship building, uh, youth programs, but not as a uh, as a safety patrol in the school. So that was we're not in the schools as a result of the Falconer report. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your okay. time today. My name is Andrew. I just recently graduated from Westview. All right. Now today we had this consultation about bringing police into schools. Um, how did you feel about? That? Um, I don't think they should do that because. Let's be honest, our community doesn't have a good relationship with um, the police um, force and then if we, if we let them in the school, it's like we're forcing them, we're forcing their authority on us. We, they, they claim that they want to um, build the relationship, but if you put them in the school, you're forcing that relationship to be built, which is not, it's not, it's not there. That relationship is not there. We need, they need to do more stuff like... Officer Hicks, I believe his name was, did a wrestling program last year. More stuff like that, programs with um, the students at West. That's how you build a relationship, not them patrolling the hallways or thing. Because let's be honest, if you get into a fight, that's turning into a charge. If you threaten somebody a little threat, it's turning into a charge. And we all know once you're charged, you're trapped. So, so criminalization is... Yeah, that's, that's big. Um, a lot of students here, a lot of students at West, who, this recently got arrested for extortion, um, bothering Kim for his money, but they charged him with extortion. That alone, his criminal record is shattered alone. And if the police is in the school, they're even closer than they are now. So a lot of kids, that, that's going to be happening more frequent in the schools. So there was a question portion where the community were, were allowed to ask the panel questions. How did you feel that played out? Um, I, it, was, it was kind of funny because they were like, trying to not answer the question, going back and forth, making it sound nice, but not really answering the real real issues, the real question at it. So I, I think that part was very difficult for them because the, they know that the answers that they came coming up with is not the answer. So they have to sh try to find ways to justify it and it's hard to do. Yeah? So what do you think the point's going to be after the end of this? Um, I'm hoping no officers in the schools, but anything can happen. You know? What would you like to see happen? Um, I, I want the officers, the p police, and the, the community to build a relationship, but not by not this way, uh, not by force. I don't want them to be genuine um, and really want to get to know us, the community, and that's how this is going to be solved. But. Thank you so much. All right. So you have it. I'm at Westview. Community consultation, I guess, after the fact, because there are uh, police in some of the schools. Um, as a parent, 
I don't have the answers. As a journalist, I see a lot of back and forth. Nobody's getting any clear answers. Uh, so the resource police officer, in my opinion, is probably going to happen at Westview, with or without the community backing it up. So for JaneFinch.com, I'm Sabrina Gopal. Peace.